One of the major stories that we covered this week is about Evenko's decision to ban the native headdress at uh, concerts. So can you tell us about that? Sure. Uh, the Gazette's stance on this issue is that um, Evenko, which is the uh, company in charge of uh, events like Oceaga, uh, Il Sonic and Heavy Montreal made the right call. So if you show up to any one of these events in the next six weeks or so, because that's when they're going to be happening, uh, and you're carrying or wearing a uh, First Nations inspired headdress, it will be taken away from you. And if you don't want to hand it over, that's fine, but you have to leave. And we think that this was the right call. And why is that? There are a couple of different reasons why the Gazette has taken this position. Um, the first one, first, I want to get it out of the way. Uh, certain types of cultural borrowing and cultural appropriation are not necessarily a bad thing. You see plenty of people, for instance, uh, wearing kilts who are not necessarily of Scottish descent. We also see a lot of um, choices in terms of clothing that borrow a little bit from other cultures, and that can be fine. The difference here is that many Native American uh, and, of course, First Nations groups in Canada have said that they find the wearing of these headdresses at music festivals and in fashion shoots, for instance, offensive. So they've come out and they've said, we're not okay with this. And so that adds another dimension to it. That at, th at that point, you've got a group of people saying, this is making us uncomfortable. And so then you have to reevaluate um, what you're doing and, and try to make changes that will make them more comfortable and in this case stopping completely with the wearing of these headdresses. Does this also have to do with the cultural representation of these headdresses? It does. Uh, the headdresses have a very particular significance in First Nations culture. Um, this is something that I think a lot of people who wear them don't necessarily understand. Um, these are items of clothing that are typically worn by high-ranking, uh, respected elders, members of the community, chiefs within the First Nations community. Oftentimes you'll see ceremonial um, activities where they're meeting with the Prime Minister, for instance, or the Governor General, and then you would see these, these headdresses in those situations, and that's appropriate for uh, people who have earned them. Um, Traditionally, they were also considered something, again, that you earned uh, through acts of bravery. So each feather would represent a different act of bravery that you'd carried out. Uh, in that way, they were much like uh, a suite of war medals that you might wear on your uniform if you were a member of the Canadian Forces. And in just trying to imagine someone showing up at a music festival with a fake uh, series of war medals on their on their costume, essentially, it would cause a lot of uh, offense and people would be upset. And I think, uh, and the Gazette feels that the, the headdress should be treated very similarly. And so the ban is in effect appropriate. Great, thank you. You're welcome.